They're currently stacked at the top with LeBron, AD, and Kyle Kuzma. Role players like Danny Green, Rajon Rondo, and JaVale McGee could provide some good depth. Max, what is the Lakers' biggest issue this season? Coaching. The Clippers. Oh. Coaching. That's it. I mean, and, and by the way, and the coaching is indicative of a franchise that is still not fully healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, it, there's, there's, it's, it, there's more clarity than there used to be, right. but it's still not functioning properly. Stephen A., if you – look, just give LeBron James his coach. This was to, – to me, it's a clutch sports inside job. You know what if I do if I'm a franchise and there's no Pat Riley in my franchise yeah. to really do it exactly the right way, right? I, I would say, oh, wow, clutch sports wants to do the inside job with me? Hallelujah. So well, let me get this straight. I'm going to get LeBron, A.D., uh, LeBron's coach that he wants and all the support, you thank you. What you say is thank you and you move on. Instead, there was a whole thing with Ty Lue and they didn't want to give him the number of years so then overpay him. But they didn't want to do that either. So they hire Vogel, but really they don't really want Vogel. They want Jason Kidd. So they hire Kidd to be Vogel's assistant. But everyone and their mother seems to know that Jason Kidd will be the head coach of that team. Why would you mess around with something as important as your head coach when you have a real shot to win a championship and LeBron is 102 years old? Why? And by the way, AD's going into a walk year. Why would you mess around? The biggest issue is not the roster, Stephen A. They got a very, very good roster. It's the coaching. The biggest issue is not the coaching. The biggest issue is the Clippers. So you're not wrong. You're just not complete. Because they got the coaching. Well, it's not just that they have the coaching. They have a more complete roster, and they have better defenders. When you look at the combination of Kawhi, Paul George, and Patrick Beverly, you've got three elite defenders in your starting lineup with an exceptional coach who's high with his motivational skills. And then he adds the coach that coached LeBron for, for, for three-plus <laughs> years. So you got to take that into consideration as well. I'm, and, 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 and I will tell you this where you're right about the coaching. They're under immense pressure because if, with all the compliments I'm willing to throw in a Lakers direction and give Rob Palenka credit because he took some heat because of what Magic came on this show and said, he took some heat because of the stuff that was circulated before Magic came out and confirmed it all or whatever. But since Magic has been gone, even Magic has to admit that Rob Palenka has done a pretty damn good job and deserves credit for it. The flip side to it, however, is if the Lakers don't get it done and if we are able to point to their coaching – as a significant reason as to why that happened, Rob Palenka and Jeannie Buss are going to take major heat from that because you could have had Ty Lue. But I will What's say this. What's the point in not signing them? I agree. But what I will say to you is this. <clears throat> the biggest issue is the Clippers because I think that, again, they got a better roster, they have better defenders <laughs> overall, and they obviously have a better coaching, a better coach and a better coaching staff. And I think they're a better organization. And that's not to, to knock their Lakers. I just think that the Clippers are an elite organization right now. But I do believe, and I'm on the record stating, that the combination of Anthony Davis with a motivated LeBron James, mm -hmm. it's even at age 35, I think he's going to be a monster I want to be very year. clear. The combination of those two can overcome all of those superlatives I threw out about the Clippers. I disagree, but, we, but time will tell. It always does. I want to be very clear about what I mean by, you know, when I say the coaching. It's not that Vogel is a bad coach. Have Vogel you? will coach up your defense. Vogel will have the defense coached up. I actually like Vogel. Yeah, yes. he's fine. Even it's though not he's not going to be the coach after not, two years, it's, not, it's going to be Jason Kidd's although, team. Although Jason Kidd's de – well, Jason Kidd, like, defense where he wants you to, to fight through every pick and everything, that did not work in Milwaukee. Right. It just didn't work. No, but, but he does, they developed younger players, and that's why, yes, that's right. why the Understood. Lakers wanted Jason but, Kidd there, the just point, so you know. The point, is, defense. the point is the coaching as a reflection of the health of the organization mm -hmm. and the clarity and chain of command type stuff. Mm -hmm. The Clippers have it and a Hall of Fame coach. The Lakers don't. This, this, this kind of weird plan where Vogel's going to coach them to a certain point and then maybe Jason Kidd, you know, Vogel gives them cover to get the real guy they want in there but they didn't think they could put just Jason Kidd in right away. That's a mess. You had a clean way to just give LeBron his coach, and you should have done it, and you blew it. And I believe, not in the long run, they'll win a championship, but it won't be this year. Let me ask you this, Stephen A. I know they could miss Boogie's scoring potential. We know AD doesn't want to play a lot at center. So who do you think they should sign of the I people that they mentioned? I personally believe you should give Dwight Howard a chance, even though he only played nine games last year, had some off-court issues that were quite embarrassing, I might add. The bottom line is, is that the year before that, he played 81 games. He averaged 16 and 12. 
I still think that a, a focused Dwight, a focused and humble Dwight Howard that knows that everything doesn't evolve around him anymore could be helpful. But I am also a big Kenneth Fareed fan. Mm. And I think either, or I think just think that Howard might be a little bit bigger. And when you talk about replacing DeMarcus Cousins, obviously the Lakers have other priorities, but I would say Dwight Howard before Joakim Noah. Okay. Um, and depending on you talk about because Anthony Davis said he doesn't want to play the five. Kenneth Fareed is really not a five. He's more of a four, but I like Kenneth Fareed a lot. But I would say you give Dwight Howard a chance. How about you take Anthony Davis aside and say, and like, like Tim Duncan, this happened with Tim, Tim Duncan. Certain years really played more center, and then other years really played more power forward, although it's fungible, right? Mm -hmm. You're a rim protector, and you can score in the post. You can do other things. Yeah. What are you really? Maybe you take Anthony Davis aside and say, look, in the long run, we will get you a big man. But you know what? This year, maybe you play more five than you want. Yeah, the problem with you those, got JaVel McGee I, and then you're covered. You're right, but the problem with that is one of the biggest reasons guys don't want to play the five is because of Grind. the banging, the mm -hmm. physicality they have to subject themselves to. They're worried about it compromising them down the line. That's where the problem mm -hmm. lies. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, highlights, and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.